Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today, we begin with GarageBand. We're going to dive in and kind of take a look around the interface of the software and see all the changes that have taken place over the years with GarageBand. To begin with, we're going to start by jumping into what you're going to see when you first open GarageBand and you get your first new project. So I'm going to go to File and New, and I'm not going to save what I was working on there. And this is what I'm going to open up with. Now, in this situation, we've got a choose a project, and I've got a lot of different options that I'm going to be exploring in the following tutorials here. We're just going to start off with the basic lay of the land here. So we're going to jump into empty project. I've got that selected. I'm not going to change anything down here, and I'm going to go choose. Once we're in here, it's going to ask us what kind of tracks we want to start with. We've got software, we've got audio, um, and then we've got a new drummer mode that's actually in here that adapts to the music that you put in. We're just going to start off with record using a microphone. I'm going to go create. And now that I'm in here, I've got the basic setup for GarageBand. I want to walk you through this, um, take a little time to just kind of explore around so you know exactly what we're looking at. To begin with, um, I'm going to toggle these things off so that it's less to look at here. And we'll start with the basic most function of GarageBand, the one that you're going to want to start using right away so you can start seeing what's in here. The very first thing that we're going to look at is the loops. If you look over here in the corner, we've got three indicators here. We've got a notepad, we've got the loops, and then we've got media. We're going to go into the loops, and that's going to pop up with this sidebar. Now the loops, it's broken up into instrument, genre, and moods. And with each of these, you can do some extensive searching to find quickly what it is that you're looking for. For instance, if I know exactly what instrument I want to work with, I can jump in, grab tambourine, and then I can very quickly sample what that is. Now, I can play, listen to the tambourine, pause it. If it's something that I like, I can go ahead and I can drag it into my workspace here. Now, this is how I'm going to go ahead and start building tracks with loops. So I've got that loop in here of the tambourine. And the way that it's designed is that I can play it. All I did is I hit spacebar there. And then it plays. And then I can back it up. Or I can use these buttons up here to back it up. Okay, So that's a, kind of the basic beginning. Now I've got one track here that's focused on the tambourine. Let's say we want that to go out for a little while. Up in the top right hand corner you can see this little swirly thing. And that's going to drag it out for however long I need here. Okay, So now I've got, well, 19 measures of music here um, that are all laid out for me. Now the next thing I can do is I can go ahead and I can grab some other tracks. Once I'm done sampling it, now I can say, oh, well, maybe I like this one. And I can go ahead and drag that into a new track. And it will automatically create that new track over here. So track one, and then we've got track two. And of course, the same thing here. I can grab this. I can drag this out whichever way I want. If I don't want this here, I can always take it and slide this over. Okay. And if it's a situation where I don't want all of it, I could even grab the bottom right corner, and I could shorten it up even more. Okay, and again, the same thing that I want to do, I can hit spacebar, and it's going to start playing this, and I can hear everything that's going on. Awesome. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete those out of there. That's the beginning. So, that's loops. Now, let's say I want to find something more specific, and I want to search for it. I can go ahead and come back over here, and I can cancel out of my selection. Now, once I cancel out of my selection here, I can go into the search, and I can type in guitar. Okay. Now it's going to bring up everything in guitar, um, anything that's got the guitar word in it. Let's go ahead and just go with uh, acoustic. Now with acoustic, it's going to bring up everything that I've got here, strummed acoustic. Once I'm done sampling that, same thing, I can drag that in. Now if I don't want to search by instrument, what I can do is I can search by genre. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Uh, first I'm going to reset my search, get rid of that. Now, if I don't want an instrument, I can go ahead and search by genre as well. So I can click on genre, and it brings up a whole bunch of different stuff that's over here. Um, I've got moods as well. And, of course, any of these things I can go ahead and I can add into some of my favorites. So I can go in and I can check this is my heart track here. Once I've got that checked, I can go ahead and go over to my favorites, and now that track will go ahead and show up in here. 
which is a quick way to mark tracks that are useful for me and um, I can find them quickly without having to search and search and search and search. Okay, so that's the loops area. We're going to go ahead and get out of there. We're going to take a look at some of the other stuff that's going on here. Um, let's go ahead and go back to instrument and then we're going to reset this. Once I'm back here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find something. Uh, let's see here. Let's stormy orchestra. Let's go ahead and drag that out there. Yeah, I drag that out there. And you can see that it automatically renames my track according to that. If I ever want to get rid of a track, I can go ahead and select it, right click on it, and go delete track. I can also, if I want to, if I'm making a lot of changes to this or it's my own track, I can always come back in here and I can rename a track. And then, of course, I can go new audio track as well. And I can add those on. If I don't want to right click, I can always click the plus and add on another audio track. And I've got my choice of from here. So let's say I wanted to add on... Um, the drummer and go ahead and create that and now it's adding in the drummer according to what I've got with the orchestral kit so we can line these up let's go ahead and drag this back here okay there you go you get the idea not the greatest but very quickly throwing tracks together you get the idea so now um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this track out of here I got a couple tracks in if I want to change the sound of one of these tracks, I can go ahead and select it, and then I can go to the little dial up here, which is our smart controls here, and I can click on that, and it's going to bring up a whole new area down here at the bottom. This is my EQ. Okay, The EQ is uh, pretty standard. Um, you can adjust the low, mid, and high, and then you can add some other effects onto it as well, which we'll get into a little bit later. So if I want to tweak the sound of anything, I can use that. Okay, Now, if I want to do anything else with the clip, as far as editing it, I can go ahead and take the EQ off, and I can click on the scissors up here, and that's going to bring up my editors. Now, you'll see that it's got a different look down here at the bottom. I can come in here, and I can do a number of things, which we'll be getting into in the coming episodes here as we go along. For now, just kind of a quick lay of the land. Now, um, last thing that I'm going to show before we, uh, we kick off and I give you some time to mess around with the loops and see what you can come up with is um, Stormy A Orchestral Kit. I've got that selected. If I want to change the sound of that, I can come over here and I can pick a number of different effects that are pre-made effects over here. For instance, let's say I wanted to add a track while we're looking at voice here. I want to add on a track that is actually a voice track, so I'd select the microphone, create, and now I've got my audio. You can see it's picking up my audio right here. And now I can go over and give this a specific um, effect. So maybe I wanted a tube vocal to make it sound a little bit more old, old school. Maybe I wanted a bright vocal where it adds on a little bit of uh, reverb and ambience to it. Um, but either way, I can put that effect on there. And now when I drag this back, I'm going to go ahead and mute these so I'm not picking those up. And I hit record. Now it's recording exactly what I'm saying, and it's adding that bright focal effect actually onto it in real time, which is pretty impressive here. We're going to go ahead and stop that recording. We're going to back it up, and now we can go ahead and hit play. Now it's recording exactly what I'm saying, and it's excellent. So just a quick, quick tutorial um, showing you a few of the features that in GarageBand, some of the areas that we're going to be learning in the upcoming episodes. In the meantime, Thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.